Hello, this is the introduction to History and Systems for Fall 2012. If you're watching this, um, you've got my messages uh, that I will not be here for the first day of class. And so I've required you to actually watch the introduction that I would have done with you in person on YouTube. Um, so hopefully you are in the right place. Um, I am Dr. Jacqueline Gaddis. I will be your professor for the semester. And I apologize for not being able to be there in person to do this introduction. Um, I, I, re I had a scheduling problem. So thankfully, it's only during our introduction where we'll largely go over the syllabus. And I actually can do this by videotape. It's, it's, it doesn't have to be a lecture, so it can be brief. So at least it happened <laughs> this week. Um, but I did, I didn't want to lose the class time um, in postponing our introduction. Uh, we just have too much material to cover in the semester. But also, I didn't want to send somebody else in to go over the syllabus with you for a couple of reasons. First is I really wanted to give you students some kind of sense of who I am and who you're going to be spending the semester of history and systems with. Um, I want you to have some sense of who I am before we dive into the material. Um, because I'm an adjunct, you don't know me, um, and I don't know you yet. So, but I felt like a video might give you a sense a little bit of, of kind of what kind of person you're going to be working with. Um, and so I wanted you to have that before we go ahead and um, get the ball rolling um, the, during the first lecture. The other reason I made this video and put it on YouTube um, is that I want to be the one to go over the, my syllabus with you. Um, I've found in doing this class that if I'm not clear and specific about what I want you to focus on in reading through the syllabus, confusion happens. And, and if you're unclear about certain points or someone's not familiar and trying to kind of, oh, there's this assignment, what does this really mean? If you're not clear, that's going to lead to confusion, and then I'm going to have an expectation of you down the road in the semester, and, but you're not going to be clear about that I'm expecting something of you, and then, then there's possible frustration. So I want to be the one to go through this syllabus with you and highlight my expectations of you here um, so that so that no, it's like informed consent in the therapy room is what we call it. So you know what I'm going to be expecting of you, so there's no surprises. Um, uh, and so just that the communication is clear and hopefully to minimize any confusion or frustration down the road. Now what I'm going to try to do, I have yet to do this, I apologize, is actually in Moodle require you to see this video and download the syllabus in order to progress forward in doing the assignments. Um, and this will, in then watching the YouTube and downloading the syllabus, my plan is then that will count for your attendance points for the first uh, class period. I'm going to try and make that happen. Moodle, is, Moodle 2 is just being um, updated today. Um, and I'm doing this a little bit ahead of time. Um, so. If that doesn't happen and you just have free access to the assignments, whether you watch this or not, well, that's fine. You'll all still get your attendance points for the first day, whether you watch this or not, um, the kind of free two points of the semester. Um, however, it will not serve you, I think, to skip the introduction um, and to skip watching this video and looking over the semester because as the semester progresses, regardless of whether you watch this or not, I'm going to expect you to be clear about the syllabus and I will, I will hold you to what the syllabus says and grade you based on that, whether you're prepared or not, because the expectation is you're going to watch this video. So, um, whether you do or not, kind of from this point on, I'm still gonna hold you to the syllabus. So, um, I recommend watching. Okay, 
So anyways, um, in terms of, I want to introduce myself a little bit. Again, I'm an adjunct, so you don't know who I am. Um, you'll get a better sense of, of me as we go and do this semester together. But uh, my name is uh, Dr. Jacqueline Gaddis. I'm a clinical psychologist. I graduated from Rosemead School of Psychology, which is part of Biola University. Um, I am in private practice, so I have my own office in Costa Mesa. I see clients. Uh, I'm an adjunct professor at Vanguard. I teach undergraduate history and systems, but then I teach over at the grad psych department, um, as well as I supervise training therapists, so students who are in training to, to be a therapist on their own someday. I train, I supervise training therapists both at Vanguard and at Rosemead up at Biola. So those are the various hats I wear. Um, other than that, I'm mom. Um, I have a two and a half year old son named Ryan, um, with bright red hair, and a boy I love to pieces. And I may or may not find opportunities to throw in stories of him throughout the semester, but. Um, I will probably look for those moments because that's part of my life, so that's what's alive for me now. It's a big part of what I do as a mom. Um, other than that, I'm, I'm married and I love, I guess my favorite TV shows, I love uh, Big Bang Theory and I love How I Met Your Mother and I love Dark Chocolate. A little bit about me. Um, this would be the point, if I had you in person, that I would ask about you. <laughs> I would ask more about juniors and seniors, if we have any sophomores, and who's interested in clinical psych, and what are you interested in. I don't get a chance to do that with you guys, I apologize. But the biggest thing that I would actually ask you at this point, that I would, I would really want to hear, and I may ask you anyways at some point, is what have you heard about this class? <laughs> because, partly because I know um, this is a hard class. And partly I want to know kind of the expectations I'm walking into. What are you guys presuming this class is going to be? Kind of, what uh, can of worms am I walking into? But I don't have you in person. So, what I remember the students telling me last semester is um, the obvious that this class is hard. There's a lot of reading. I remember someone mentioning the essay tests and that being difficult and, and actually for some students a new experience that hadn't had an essay test before. Some students had. Um, the comment that I remember the most clear though was, was someone saying whenever you ask someone about oh what classes are you in they say history and systems they looked like a deer in the headlights or like a zombie. They just look, clinical word was they look traumatized, like they were doing something very hard and were in the midst of shock, doing their best to get through. So I have no idea what you've heard. Um, I, I, I would love to think that, the, that, that that's not the word on the street, but um, my general idea is, is that is kind of the word on the street about this class, and I want you to know that I know that. Um, and I hope to both validate for you that this is a hard class, and I've built some things into the class to try and address that and hopefully make it easier. Um, or at least to help you consolidate the material. Um, I, I can't necessarily maybe make the material easier, but maybe to build in some pacing and some time to review. Um, so I hope to do that. And I, I also hope to give some kind of reality checking too. So things I know students have heard, um, I believe, about this class in the past is that there is a lot of reading. Um, I. You know, I, I, I haven't been an undergrad in a long time, but my sense of this class relative to under, other undergrad classes I've seen recently is actually that it's not that much more reading. Um, in some ways, this class might be a little reading light. 
Um, it's not the amount of reading that's the issue, I think, for most students. It's, it's the amount of detail. It's the number of schools of, of theory or therapy or people or, or dates and then some of the philosophical concepts that we're going to talk about, some of the more abstract stuff. So I actually don't think that this class is really heavy. It's not a heavy reading class. Um, it's just the amount of detail we're going to cover that I think is what can be overwhelming to some students. Um, so, looking at my notes, um, I mean, so I've done several things this semester um, to try and work with that. Uh, I've picked a new textbook that I think does a, a better job than the than the previous textbook that I used of con condensing the minutia, condensing the material, and really presenting what's most important. So, I like this textbook better. Um, and I hope that's your experience. I hope, I hope your experience is that as far as a textbook goes, it's, it's at least clear. Um, textbooks aren't really necessarily known for being interesting and exciting. That's not their strong suit. But at least hopefully that this textbook will be clear. And I feel like it is. Um, I, have, I have cut out some of the, uh, what I felt like was extraneous reading from last semester. I've cut out some of that material to kind of even trim it down a little bit. I've built in a couple of days this semester to review material, not to add more, but just to go through and review and um, hopefully clarify and, and consolidate to kind of draw some threads from the beginning to the middle to the end for you. And, and in general, the way I teach this course, because there is a lot of detail. We are covering, we're covering many thousands of years. We're starting with the ancient Greeks, um, 2000 BC up until the present. So there is, we're covering a lot of time and there is a lot of detail. So my, my general approach to this class, or at least I try, is to go ahead and dive into the detail, dive into the minutia, swim in it for a little bit, come back up and get kind of get a breath of air, get oriented, kind of go big picture, talk about, okay, you know, what are we doing again? And then go back into the detail and then come back out for some air and then go back in. I try and, and have that kind of rhythm to help with comprehension and perspective and not just get lost in the minutia. That said, um, as we go through the course, if you find yourself confused, you have questions, surely, but if you're confused or you are losing the, the train of thought, you're not sure how things relate or why we're talking about something, please stop me. Please raise those questions. If you have that question, other people have that question. Same with confusion. You're, not, you're generally not going to be the only one. Um, and and I, even if it wasn't a time of debriefing and going overview that I planned, we can do that on the fly. So I, I find myself fairly flexible. So I just can't read minds. <laughs> so if you are needing something, please let me know. Okay. Um, in terms of intro and myself, how I think about this course. That's pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead and dive into the syllabus. So at this point of the video, if you haven't downloaded the syllabus, um, I would suggest maybe pausing and going ahead and doing that um, so that as I talk about things, you actually have it in front of you and it makes more sense because I'm going to refer back to the syllabus. I'm not going to just tell it to you verbatim. Um, I don't have it memorized. Um, also, I may um, your, your syllabus is going to look different than mine. I have, um, I have it shrunk down so I can look at it differently, but just so that you know, so that that does, it doesn't confuse you. Okay, so syllabus. First page, I have two email addresses. Um, as you're going into Moodle, most of your assignments are going to be uploaded to Moodle. Um, 
you're going to be in that. It's going to make most sense for you to email me through the Moodle system for you. I get that. Um, I just want you to know I'm a bit slower responding to the Vanguard EDU emails than I am to my Gmail um, email. So you'll see two accounts. The the G or it's not Gmail. Excuse me. It's my my personal website. My Dr. Gaddis, Jackie at drgaddis.com. I respond to that a lot faster because it's hooked up to my phone. So um, I I see those emails throughout the day when I'm with my son, in between clients. Um, if it's a short thing, I can I can get back to it right away. Uh, Vanguard email. I have to be in front of an actual screen. Um, and a big screen computer. And that doesn't really happen until the end of my day. Um, so you can use whatever's easiest for you, that's fine. Just know with my Vanguard email, if you do it Tuesday night and we have class Wednesday afternoon, I may or may not have seen it. So again, please don't, if it feels like I'm not addressing something you've asked me in, in email, don't. Um, don't think that I'm just ignoring you, but bring it up. Talk to me. Um, and most likely, I haven't gotten it. I wear a lot of hats, so I just, I don't, I'm not able to get to things as, as, as much as I'd like to, as quickly as I'd like to. In terms of the book, the book is Schultz and Schultz, A History of Modern Psychology, 10th edition. I don't know if anybody has any issues with the text this semester. I'm going to go ahead and anticipate. Um, Last semester, they ran out of texts um, for this class. Um, so I'm, I'm going to tell you what I, I told them at the time. The first couple of classes, um, most of the material, not all, most of the reading material is actually online. It's on Moodle. We will be actually reading outside of the text for a bit of time. As long as we're in the, the Greek, Roman, and Middle Ages period, we'll be outside of the textbook. Um, so that material is online for the Schultz chapter one. That's the first chapter that's due next class period, the first class period that I'll be physically present for on 827. Um, if you don't have the text, my suggestion is to try and find someone who's in the class. Borrow their textbook, copy the chapter, whatever you need to do. But um, psychology department doesn't have an extra one and we don't have we don't have one on reserve. They, the library isn't really doing that anymore. Um, everything has to be uploaded um, if it's going to be reserved reading material. So um, I need you to be responsible for your reading. So if you don't have a textbook, I'm sorry. I know that's an inconvenience. Um, but look at the names on Moodle of your fellow classmates. See if you know anyone and um, hit them up for the first chapter if you need to. Okay. Course description. I know you can read, but I'm going to go ahead and read it to you. Um, most people skip over this, um, but I think it captures pretty well what we're going to be doing. Um, okay, so course description. This course is designed to expose you to the philosophical underpinnings of scientific psychology and psychotherapy. We will examine the development of the discipline through the pre-modern, modern, and post-modern scientific periods. We will also examine the historical and theological developments that focused Western thought on the idea of self, a turn that gave psychology much of its power in the West. This class will challenge your thinking. Understanding philosophical concepts takes work, even for those well-versed in the discipline. If you hang in there, you will understand the philosophical principles and historical movements upon which our current psychology rests. Once you understand the foundation, you are free from the tyranny of the reigning paradigm. You are free to alter the system or to create your own. So, this is what we're going to be doing this semester. We are going to be looking at, if I were to sum it up, why did psychology develop when it did? And with each new way of doing psychology, each new evolution or revolution, depends on how you think about it, why did they come up when they did? How did we, and then how did we get to where we are now? And how, why psychology started when it did, and each evolution thereafter, has a lot 
has a lot to do with what's going on in the culture, in the zeitgeist, the intellectual cultural culture at the time. It has to do with the, the philosophy of the time, the knowledge of the time, and, and then also external forces of whether we're talking about war or the bubonic plague, or there are external forces that also impact why certain intellectual revolutions happened when they did. So we are going to be following broadly, very broadly, the evolution of thought to understand why psychology emerged when it did in each successive evolution in psychology thereafter, whether that's behaviorism or gestalt or psychoanalysis. We, I will organize these eras broadly by the pre-modern thinking, modern thinking, and post-modern thinking. With the hope that, at the end of the class, you will be able to better understand how we think about psychology now, and how we think about the human now. Now whether you agree with those presuppositions or not, because your future of psychology project is your final project. We don't do an exam. We don't do a final exam in this course. Your future of psychology project is is intended for you to think about what might psychology be like in the future, but also you could play with it of what, how might you want psychology to be in the future. But in order to change your your understanding of the discipline, you have to understand what philosophical underpinnings make its foundation right now, and then what might you want to change it to. This is what we're doing. <laughs> Broad goals. Um, I, I, I but we'll do the best to accomplish them. Um, and we had fun with the future psych projects last semester, so uh, it is very doable. So that's what we're here to do. Um, moving on into the details, uh, for those of you who have some kind of accommodations, uh, this usually comes up for exams, um, whether that's for learning disabilities, mental health issues, or medical disabilities, um, the, the biggest piece of information I need you to look at under service of disabilities, I need you to look at that um, specifically regarding tests. I'll say it here in and it's in that syllabus, I'm going to hold you responsible for it, is that if you plan to take the exam outside the classroom, so uh, a less distracting environment or have longer, it's usually it's either less distracting and or longer test time. If you plan to take the test outside the classroom for those reasons, you are required to sign up to take the test before we take the test in class. Okay. So let me clarify and say it again. You, if you are taking the test for special accommodations outside the classroom, you must take the test before we take our test in the classroom. If it happens to be at the exact same time, that's also fine. You are not permitted to take the test after we take the test in the classroom. Okay. So if so this means two things, um, yeah, really they're related, but one, you, you need to be on your game enough to schedule when you're going to take the test outside the classroom ahead of time. Now my recommendation is not a requirement. The requirement is that you take the test before we take the test in the classroom. That's the requirement. The recommendation is that you see Kathleen Durrell in the undergrad psych department, uh, she's the uh, administrator there, that you see her a week ahead of the testing in order to schedule your test. And I say a week in advance because there are a lot of students needing to take tests around the time we take tests. And there are times when the psychology building is quieter than others. It's not a very well insulated building. Okay? You can hear foot traffic up and down the hallways, you can hear conversations in the hallways. Generally, fri I've been told Friday mornings and Friday afternoons are the quietest. If you want those times, because there are limited rooms, there's limited availability, um, 
If you want the best times, you have to get there ahead of time. If you wait till last minute, you're going to get whatever's there. Uh, and we just can't guarantee that that's going to be a good, quiet time, um, often the, one of the purposes of getting outside the classroom. Okay, so to clarify, you must take the test before we take the test in the classroom, not after. If that doesn't happen, if you don't sign up ahead of time, you will be required to take the test in classroom with no accommodations. So I will not, um, you won't be able to have extended time periods and I won't be able to do anything about the noise. Um, and I, this is not something I'm going to be monitoring for any of you. Um, you it's, it's your responsibility. So I just ask that you let me know when you've scheduled the test for so that I can send an electronic copy of the test to Kathleen or Barbie, um, who's in uh, the uh, it's academic center here. Direct, she's the director of learning skills. Okay, if you have any questions about that, let me know. Um, if anybody else has additional accommodations, see me on the first Monday, August 27th, and we'll make announcements if, if somebody needs note takers or things like that. Um, okay, moving on. Assignments. Okay. The first set of assignments are the, what I've called the reading and movie responses. Now, this is a time where this is your, your syllabus is going to look different than mine again because I've shrunk it. It's probably going to be good to, to look back between the the actual written syllabus and this chart. This chart gives you the date, what we're talking about, the reading assigned for the, for the day, the class period, and what assignment is due that day, okay? Every time you have something to read or there has been a movie to watch, you will have a movie slash reading response to me, okay? Um, Um, the what reading I will assign for the reading response and the question that I want you to respond to is all posted on Moodle. They're all up there now. Um, and you will upload your completed responses to Moodle. Okay. So you will, you will not be turning in your reading responses in hard copy. Um, and and actually, let me stop here. I, I'll use this as an example, but this is, this is true for most of the assignments in this class. Most of the assignments, I'll tell you which ones can be handed in hard copy. Most of the assignments in this class will be uploaded electronically to Moodle. I will, if, if that is the requirement for the assignment, I will not accept hard copies um, or emails. It's just too difficult with too many assignments and too many students to, for me to keep track of that much paper and that many emails. Um, it, it's just, I've, I may, I've done it before that way and it's just too difficult. So you will upload for the most part your assignments to Moodle. They will be time stamped. So when it says that they're due on the class day, so on the chart, You'll see you have two reading responses due on August 27th. They are due at the beginning of class on Monday, August 27th. So that is 4 p.m. So it, it will not work for you to come into class, let's say you're in a hurry, and try and upload them at 4.05 in the middle of class. They will be time stamped and you will not be allowed to submit any assignments late. And for the most part, this is true for reading responses, but hear this for the rest of the assignments too. For the most part, do not expect exceptions. Um, except in the most unusual, rare emergencies, I mean true emergencies, will I accept um, exceptions, and you can come talk to me about that. But as a, as a rule, just do not expect um, exceptions on this. It's because everything is online and you have ample time to see what's required of you and to, to plan ahead if you have a sporting event or you know you're going to be on vacation or I had someone out of the country for a period of time last period, um, you will know these things ahead of time. 
um, and, and even with unexpected things, because every, here it's digital, it really is very relatively easy to get to a computer and upload your response. Okay. Um, all right. So no late work will be ex um, accepted. Um, if you have a very rare emergency, you can come talk to me. Um, in terms of your reading responses, they're worth two points apiece. And the point value that you're rewarded will depend on the thoroughness of your response. So it's not just zero, you don't do it, two, if you did get it, you did do it. There, there is a continuum based on how much effort you put into it. So again, what you read for the reading response, the question is all posted on the week. You'll see it on Moodle that it's due, and you just go ahead and you hit the link and you upload your response right there. Okay, um, you are allowed to skip one reading response in the semester and still be awarded the full 50 points. There are some weeks where two reading responses are due because you read two chapters or, or something like that. You're only allowed to skip one of those and still get the full 50 points. Um, so, but you are allowed to miss one. Okay. Those are the reading responses. The exams, there will be two 300 point mixed essay and multiple choice exams. Uh, this semester I went away from solely essay exams to a mix. And I am including multiple choice because I want to draw on each student's strength. Some students have a very hard time with essays. Um, some students have a really hard time memorizing details and are much better at the abstract and kind of communicating themselves. So I want each exam to pull on the strengths of each kind of student. So there will be a mix. Blue books will be required for both exams, uh, for the essay portion of the exams. I will not have extras. You will be required to buy those at the bookstore and remember to bring them. Um, in terms of the exams, um, you will be tested on all the material. Well, let me put it this way. You will be expected to be familiar with all the material that I assign you to read and that we cover in class. Um, my lectures will not cover everything you read. I will not discuss everything you read. I will discuss some things that are not in the book. So, and everything's fair game. So if you'll notice on my syllabus, there are portions of each, almost every chapter that I say, you don't have to read this, you don't have to read that. You will not be tested on that. But everything that I assign you to read and everything that's covered in lecture is fair game. Okay. Um, okay. The next assignment is the individual outline assignment and group in class timeline. It's worth 100 points. So breaking it down. What we're going to do at about, mm, about a third of the way through the class, we're going to do a timeline in class. We're going to draw, decorate, whatever, color. We're going to be kids for it. I'm going to try and play a little bit. My, my goal is to try and incorporate some media and some play into this class because it is so intellectual and so heavy duty, so content heavy. We're going to do a timeline of the most significant events and figures that it impacted the history of psychology up to the point at which we do the timeline. So that's the, the in-class assignment that we're driving towards. There's a personal portion of this, and that's the individual outline. So the assignment that you upload to Moodle is that you make a, a brief, and I mean brief, bullet point outline where you label the name of the person or the event, real short, and then underneath a, a real brief statement of why you think that person or event was significant. I do not want to see cut and paste of my lecture notes, which you will be getting my PowerPoints, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. I don't want to see cut and paste of my PowerPoints. I will take off if that's what you turn in. That's not you, you doing your own thinking or your own 
synthesis, which is what this assignment is for. So you label the event or the person in a brief statement of why you think that's important. There are not a minimum, um, well, I'm going to update my syllabus in this moment. I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to say a minimum of five. A minimum of five events and figures for the individual outline that you need to type up and the reason why you think they're important. There's no maximum, though. You type that up and you upload that to Moodle. Okay? That's the individual portion. The group portion is then you, you will be assigned to groups in class and you will all bring in your timelines, your outlines, excuse me, and you will jointly decide between all of you what events and, and figures do you think were really the most important and do you all agree you know, to have that, have that conversation of which ones might you leave out, might maybe you'll include them all, and then you will draw out one single timeline and then very informally, I will walk through each group. I will walk up to each group and you will explain to me your choices. So, um, we won't be making a large group presentation. So those of you who might be more introverted, you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to, make a, have to explain this to all your peers, but you will informally explain to me your choices. Um, and the personal outline is worth 50 points, and then your participation in class on the timeline is also worth 50 points. And so I will be assessing in class whether or not you are participating. Let me make sure there isn't anything else I want to say about that assignment. Just the reminder that, again, you will not be turning in hard copies of your outline. You will be uploading it to Moodle. And again, no exceptions. This is another assignment. I, I, I will not take uh, late submissions or hard copy. OK. So the final project, the Future of Psychology project, is worth 200 points. I will read, again, I will read this description to you. And I'll briefly tell you what it's about. But we are going to spend a couple of class periods talking about this. So you'll get more information in the, in the future. So don't. You don't have to worry about it now. Uh, but the description is, historical, political, social, and cultural forces impact both the science and practice of psychology. For this project, we will describe current forces exacting pressure on the nature of psychological practice. Together, we will consider the impact of globalization, technology, advances in neuroscience, positive psychology, and etc. In a small group, you and your classmates will design a psychology of the future. Future details regarding this presentation will be provided in class. Okay. So this is, at the beginning when I read the course description, I talked about when we get to the end, you may be thinking about how you might want to reorganize, restructure the, the discipline of psychology, how we think about humans, how we think about research, how we think about therapy. This is, this is where you get to play. Um, and I'm going to say this now and I'll say it throughout the semester, but the Future of Psychology project is meant to partly to be fun. Okay? So it, it can feel daunting to students to hear me say, you're going to create your own psychology. It's not meant to be daunting. You don't have to know the ins and the outs. It's actually meant to be more playful. Um, but to get your creative juices going, to think about as we go along, how do we understand, understand psychology now? How do we understand the human? How do we understand what research is, what knowledge is, what gets to be decided as truth? And what's decided not to be true? Who gets to decide that? How do we do therapy? And whether you agree with the underlying assumptions based on which these judgments are made, and you then get to play with if you could change it and how you might anticipate the culture pushing psychology to change. Now, what might psychology look like? But the idea of the Future of Psychology project is in the midst of a very content-heavy, really dense course. Let's play with these ideas a little bit. Let's try them on. Let's have some fun. So it, 
it's not meant to be something you have to worry about that it's going to be perfect and completely thorough. Okay? I know that it can't be. Um, details. In terms of the Future of Psychology project, this, this is the only assignment that has a piece that's turned in in hard copy. Okay? There are two draft outlines that you will do throughout the semester for this project. What I mean by that is when you, you're going to do a group presentation at the, end of, at the end of the semester, this is your final project instead of the final exam, you're going to hand to me a group outline of what you're going to talk about, the main points of what you're going to talk about, so that I can follow your main points as you're talking. It, it helps me know it helps me know what content you're covering because sometimes depending on how creative you get, I can get lost in the, the fun of it and, and actually not necessarily process all the content. So the outline helps me actually follow the content and grade it. Okay, some of the feedback I got from last semester though is even though we talked about the Future of Psychology project throughout the semester, even though I set aside two class periods and sometimes half a class period at the end, to give you guys group time to work on it, that generally people still waited to the very last minute to throw it together, um, despite warnings and reminders and all those sorts of things. Human nature. So I took that feedback and, and someone mentioned it, might, it would be helpful to have something due throughout the semester to push us, despite, you know, even though we don't want to do more work to push us to do a little bit of work on the project before we hit finals at the very end. So that's what this is. Two times throughout the semester, I am going to ask you to turn in a draft of the outline that you're going to give me at the very end of what you're going to talk about. Okay? So it's a, which means you need to think about what is going to be your topic, how you're going to present that topic, what you're going to talk about. Now, I wrote this in the syllabus. These are draft outlines. They're meant to be rough. You don't have to know everything that you're going to talk about. It's meant for you to kind of have, we think we're talking about this, and maybe then we'll talk about this, and maybe then we'll talk about this on the first one. And then the second one should progress. Okay, we know we're talking about this, and we're pretty certain we're going to talk about this, and then the rest maybe we don't know. But it's really just two opportunities throughout the semester to, to push your group a little bit to move into this project before it's last minute. Because it is a lot to do if you throw it together the last two weeks, especially in the midst of finals. Um, because these are, and let me clarify, these are group draft outlines. It's a group draft because the final outline you hand me of what you're talking about is a group project. So the draft of what you're going to be talking about that you hand in on October 3rd and November 5th, these are also group, the group outlines. So one outline per group. That's too hard for me to structure on Moodle. It just doesn't work that way. To upload one assignment to count for four or five of you. So this is, these are the only things you'll be handing in in hard copy. Are your two draft outlines and then your final outline of what you're going to say in your Future of Psychology project on the day of your presentation. These are the three assignments you'll hand to me in hard copy. And then that, it's, that's indicated, it's written here, but it's indicated on this chart of the assignment due It'll, see, it'll say draft one and draft two of outline presentation, hard copy. Okay. It's a lot of words I'm saying. Oh, my mouth is dry. Okay, we are in the final stretch here. Attendance and participation. Okay, it is part of your grade. Um, I, what I will do is I will have a clipboard with your name and the date of the classes. It'll be in the back of the room. You know, there'll be a little box for you to initial. Okay. It is